our economy is going through a complete investment shift right now because of where interest rates are going. Now, I already talked about this in the real estate market, but you're seeing the exact same thing into the stock market, where in 2020 and 2021, when we saw the lowest interest rates ever, people were dumping their money into growth stocks, into these tech stocks, into these high momentum stocks, because when you have these low interest rates, these startups can borrow money for dirt cheap, or they can raise venture capital for dirt cheap. And now you can go out and take boatloads of money and try to grow your business. And that raised a lot of investment dollars because now all these startups were able to get a whole lot of funding for very cheap and they were able to grow very quickly which also caused their valuations to skyrocket. That's why you saw this huge boom in growth, momentum, and startup companies in 2020, 2021, and even into 2022. But then in 2022, when interest rates started to rise, you can look at this federal funds chart right here, which shows how the federal funds rates changed when the Federal Reserve Bank started raising interest rates. Well, when the interest rates started to boom, it became much more difficult for these startups and tech companies and growth companies to continue raising that same amount of money, which caused this huge valuation shift, especially in these type of growth startup and tech companies. And then investors no longer to, wanted to pour their money into these startup companies and these growth companies, but rather they wanted value companies. A value company is now a company that is established, that's generating a profit, and is maybe even paying a dividend. A dividend is when a company pays you cash for doing nothing except owning it. So if a company has a lot of profit at the end of the year, there's three things that they can do with this profit. Number one is they can use this money to invest back into the company. They can open more stores, open more manufacturing plants, invest it in research and development, and hire more employees. Option number two is they can save this money for an emergency. And option number three is they can give this money away to the shareholders, their investors, people like you, people like me, with a dividend. Now, in order for a company to pay a dividend, they have to, number one, have this profit at the end of the year. And number two, they need no better use for this money. Because if a company has $100 million in their bank account and they're really trying to grow very quickly, they don't want to just give it away to the shareholders because that's going to shoot themselves in the foot because now they're not going to be able to have any money to invest in more stores or invest in more marketing. So when a company is trying to grow, they don't want to use their profit to give it back to the shareholders. They want to take this money and invest it back into the company. So for a company to pay out these dividends, they need, number one, the profit in their bank account. And then number two, they need no better use for this money where now they're making all this profit and they say, well, we have nothing better to do. Let's just give this money away to our shareholders. That's when companies should pay dividends. And that's when you start to see companies paying dividends. This is where now you start to see value companies. These are what value companies are. And that's where money has been flowing from an investment perspective. Now, what does that mean? Well, number one, obviously the valuations of some of these, these value companies have gone up in the recent years because of the money flow, the shift in money flow, but it also creates opportunities if you know where to look. Now, I'm not going to go into how do you find good stocks, how do you analyze stocks, and how do you do that in this video, but if you don't want to get into the business of investing in companies and doing that research with individual companies, the next best thing is to invest in a fund, something like an ETF that gives you exposure to a basket of companies. A basket of companies is called an index, and now you're investing into this group of dividend-paying stocks. Now, this is where the key and the way that you succeed isn't by investing your money one time and it's not by perfectly trying to time the market. That's how people lose money. That's how people lose in the stock market. If you want to win as an investor who's trying to generate cash flow from the stock market, now what you want to do is you want to find these ETFs, these dividend paying ETFs and just invest your money every week every two weeks, every month. Every time you get paid, you just keep buying more of these things that are now paying you with cash flow. The advantage of investing into this type of fund is now you have reduced your risk because you might have a fund that invests into 500 companies. 
And now if one of these companies goes bankrupt, well, it doesn't really affect you that much because it's balanced up by the 499 other winners. So there are funds that are designated specifically to generating cash flow where funds are investing in companies that are paying out strong cash flows. Now, again, if one of these companies cuts their dividends or no longer offers a dividend, it's okay because now this fund will kick that company out and put another company in and it's balanced out by some of the other dividends. That's the advantage of investing into these types of dividend paying ETFs. And for this particular number three, I'm talking about domestic dividend paying ETFs, meaning companies inside of the United States. Now I'm going to give you a few examples. I'm not telling you what to invest in. I'm just giving you some examples. Make sure you do your research yourself. Number one is VYM. Number two is SCHD. Number three is SPYD. Now you can see these tickers on the screen and the current dividend yields that they're offering on the screen at the time of me recording this video. Now, the ones with asterisks as a disclaimer are ETFs that I personally invest in myself. But this is where now the way that it works is you are buying this fund that way now you can generate cash flow and you're doing two things. Number one, you're going to keep buying more shares of this fund. That way, every time you buy more of this fund, you're going to buy more cash flow. Anytime you get paid, you're buying more cash flow. You're just throwing more money into this to buy more cash flow. Every time you throw more money in, you're going to get more cash flow out. And the second thing now, if you really want to win in this game, is when you start getting your dividends, which are generally paid quarterly, meaning every three months, instead of taking the money and using it to fund your lifestyle for now, Use that money to buy more cash flow. So every time you get paid, you're buying more cash flow. And every time you get cash flow, you're using it to buy more cash flow. That way you're just building this machine. You're making money, buying cash flow. Your cash flow is making your money. You're buying more cash flow because if you do this for a decade, you're going to surprise yourself at how much cash flow you can create if you stick with it because now you're just working to pad that cash flow. You're buying more little pieces of machines that are going to pay you with more cash flow. Now, again, you want to make sure you do your own research and figure out what types of things you want to invest in because I've been talking about real estate and I mentioned REITs. REITs are real estate investment trusts. A real estate investment trust is now where you are investing into a company that invests in real estate. Now, real estate investment trusts also have some special rules where they are required, these companies, these real estate investment trusts are required to pay out 90% of their taxable income, their, their profitable, their profit to their shareholders through dividends. So REITs generally pay out high dividends. And if you want to look for REIT ETFs, again, if you don't want to have to worry about trying to find the perfect REIT, if you don't want to have to do all the research and all the work, the next best thing is to invest in an ETF or an index fund, a fund that's going to give you exposure to these types of REITs. I'm going to give you a few examples. Again, I'm not telling you what to invest in, just giving you a few examples. Number one is VNQ. Number two is SCHH. Number three is XLRE. You can see the ticker symbols right here and the current dividends that they're offering. You can use these as starting points for your research as to what types of funds that you want to invest in. I'm gonna jump back into the video in just one second, but before we do, if you are an investor and you're looking for an easy and free way to stay up to date on what's happening in the top financial news from the economy to the housing market, to the stock market, to the crypto market, to the global economy, then you have to check out Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter that I created that will keep you up to date on what's happening in the financial news. You can read the newsletter in less than five minutes every morning. It's a fun and easy to read email and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link to how you can join down in the description below. Again, the way that you win in this game is not just by throwing your money into these funds once. It's not just by hoping that these funds are going to grow and make you a lot of money. It's by consistently passively and automatically investing your money into these funds week after week after week, month after month after month, year after year after year. And if you do that over the course of a number of years or decades, you're going to build a strong brand new stream of passive cash flow, which you can use to now fund your lifestyle. Again, the more money you have to invest, the more cash flow that you're going to get. Now, there are a lot of platforms that can automate this for you. I have some of my affiliate platforms that I use down in the description. If you're looking for an app that can do this type of passive investing for you and automate that entire process, if you are in your 30s and you want to figure out how you can start investing, it is not too late, but you need to get started ASAP because there are three factors that will determine how wealthy you will become. Number one is how much money you invest. Number two is the return that you get on your money. And number three is the time, meaning how long that you can invest your money for. So for example,